We have Alex, you say, days, QA engineer. He was QA manager and he had been in QA industry over uh, 12 years. Alex, thank you for joining. Why don't you tell us about yourself a little bit? Yep. Thanks for having me. So we're going to have two parts of this video. Uh, one on this channel, the other one on uh, my channel, we have going to have a general discussion about quality assurance and state it is right now. So yeah, I've been working in QA for 12 plus years. I've started uh, with the semiconductor industry. I worked in a company called Quantana and I did a uh, certification for 11 EC standard. A uh, funny story that product that I developed at Quantana, once I left Quantana, I moved to a different place, started working in a different company. And then the cable company that I got internet through actually provided me with the router or modem that I was testing before in Quantana, which was pretty funny. I got the commercial version of the product that I worked on. Yeah. So after that, I worked in a blockchain company that did a lot of things like e-commerce and web-based gaming. I was their QA manager. Later, I moved to a different industry. So it's medical healthcare. I worked there in a startup, essentially as a senior QA engineer, but I was like a full stack because I was responsible for front end, back end, creating documentation. I was pretty much embedded into the team and was doing everything QA does, like a whole department kind of thing on a smaller scale. And now I'm in banking, so in financial industry. It's very interesting to see how different industries impact your role as a QA engineer and what do you do? Yeah. Uh, that's uh, a little bit about me. And I have a YouTube channel called Alex USA Days, where I talk about quality assurance. And I also uh, created several courses, uh, QA related content. And if you're interested, yeah. Yeah, we'll put it all links uh, in the description below for sure. Please uh, join to Alex. A little bit about myself as well. Like I've been in QA for close to nine years so far. And uh, right now I'm, I'm as a test lead engineer. And what is for the last three years, I was running and I'm still running the recruiting agency. And today we're going to talk about the job market itself in, in the QA space in the United States, especially. And we're going to talk about, uh, prediction, right? What right. is, is the most interesting part. Can you, can we predict, but yeah. One of the, one of the reasons why I reached out to you is that I often get questions from my audience saying, hey, what is going on with quality assurance? And I have a set of understanding what's going on and I, I have an explanation, but I think you are a, a much better expert in the field because you are working in, not only in QA, but in recru recruiting for, you have your own agency and you've been yeah. doing it for three plus yeah. years now. So I just wanted to ask you, uh, how is the state of um, tech IT industry right now, and maybe comparing to, is it getting worse or better? And what do you think going to be like in, in half a year, a year or so? Yeah. In two words, not great. <laughs> Everybody knows since for the last one and a half year, when the layoffs started, everybody was thinking, okay, 2024, it should bounce back and it should recover. And eventually everybody was help, hoping that, okay, layoffs finished. Now let's get started. Uh, let's hire again, but it's not happening. It's not happening. And actually, which is, I think right now it's not the bottom of the layoffs and all this job market chaos. And from the client's perspective, who is hiring, they got filled this position like, like that immediately. They don't have the problem with candidates. Two years ago, it was candidates market back then. Today is the completely opposite. You have one position, over hundreds applicants, and all like a lot of great applicants, which is tough for beginners as well. I have a lot of people, boot campers, graduates, they're reaching out and, and panic. Dude, I was trying to apply for six months, seven months, a year. And it's just like bouncing to the wall. Right. Yeah. So I've been switching jobs recently so i got a new position like about three months back but interesting enough i was able to find 
two job offers in one month. So I think the, but I have to say it shifted from remote to hybrid. Mm -hmm. remote was impossible to find because you have like hundreds of people applying across the states for the positions but if you'll start searching more locally in office or hybrid positions you increase your chances like a lot so i think that would help me out to find the job uh, so quickly if you open the linkedin right now right you will see that majority of positions are hybrid right now not remote employers they're taking advantage of it definitely I have this conspiracy theory, uh, kind of conspiracy theory, understanding of what's happening. So on one hand, companies complained about the bad economy and they're trying to cut costs. And mm -hmm. that's why they're doing the layoffs. But the reality is, I think they were over hiring years and years just to pull the greatest talent. But now they saw that everyone's firing, so they use that economy as a good excuse to lay off people. But if you look at tech companies like NVIDIA, Apple, if you go through like Facebook, all the tech companies are actually making record high profits right now and reporting like the year high profits. Yeah, yeah. I think it is temporarily as soon as, as soon as we're going to get into the more demand the zone, and that's gradually happening, we should see improvements, right? The reason why I'm saying that, and I have a link you can share it in the description. I'll have it in the description as well. So the labor of, uh, there's a webpage called U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's official U.S. statistics. And they're predicting that tech job sector will grow 25% from what it is right now within the next 10 years, which is much faster than average job growth in the United States. We will see more and more jobs. And the question is only, when probably i was hoping 2024 as well but probably next year maybe after the election uh i think this is also related to what's happening in vc in the vc industry venture capitalists right how aggressive or how do they do the investments to the companies and this is directly impacts to the hiring so a couple of months ago, I saw the report that we see they haven't been like really investing. They were holding. I think this is one of the biggest, especially in tech, right? A big portion of employers are startups, are tech companies. This is investing in, into them and they have ability to, to hire. Yeah. So I think actually I would also, there's advice. I would give to myself if I would search. Probably right now, I wouldn't start searching for specifically tech industry. Like tech companies is one one portion, portion of employers for software testers, software QA, but not tech companies like I don't know, networking companies. Well, healthcare, banking, healthcare, financials. Banking. Some of the regulated industry like healthcare, for example, in certain states have laws. If you're working with uh, PHI, like personal health information, and any sort of information that has to be protected, they have a requirement that people that work with this information, including testers, have to be local. So from that state, that also a good opportunity if you're if you can't find things remotely start looking at the companies in your state especially the ones that have like heavy regulations yep alex tell me this story when you have been when you switched the job and how did you find how did you manage finding two offers was it networking can you elaborate yeah. a little bit yeah so first of all what I did is I updated my link and I updated with the the certifications that I had. I updated with the job and tools per job. And then I used LinkedIn to generate a resume. I think there's something about the keywords and getting through the first part. When you start applying, a lot of resumes by default get rejected, just how they are structured. There's a lot of spam that hits recruiters that they just automatically deny for certain reasons. I, I don't know exactly what are those triggers, but maybe you know better. But I feel like generating a resume with LinkedIn helped a lot. Plus mm -hmm. with every job, I had a set of tools that I used for the job. And I, I am personally specifically switched to more modern tools from Selenium to like Cypress and Playwright. So they're visible on my resume. 
And I had a title for the resume that says I'm looking for a QA automation job. A lot of people miss that. They don't put it at the very top. So I highlight what I'm, what I'm looking for. And, and I started working with recruiters. So before I rarely worked with recruiters, when there was lack of candidates, it was really easy just to directly reach to the companies and work with internal recruiters. I started working with third-party recruiters as well. So one job, yep, (laughs) yep, exactly. So one job I found through a recruiter, very good recruiter that was in the healthcare. And I worked there for a little bit and I switched to another one that is in financial sector. That one I found through web page. So I, I was doing this. Hold, I was, hold on, Alex. Yep. Question before you move forward. Did you reach out to a recruiter or did they find you? How, how, what does it mean you were working with them? Yeah, I think because I keep my LinkedIn up to date and I also participate into LinkedIn questions for testing, like I'm a top voice for testing. So my profile is filled out pretty well and it's very visible so i have recruiters just generally reaching out to me even now like i I get recruiters messages daily on daily basis so i just responded to one of them for the job that i found Mm -hmm. interesting and that's how i found that recruiter or recruiter found me thing the other one i was applying directly on the jobs and you can use a lot of tools so i use google search for local jobs it will show you jobs around you you can search like you go you search for a location on Google, you can search for jobs, it will show. Uh, Glassdoor, Dice, and LinkedIn. And what I also did in the LinkedIn, and this is a kind of a, a hack that I use, but you can start searching, I recently got hired, I think there's someone hired, they automatically post a message that they got hired. Mm-hmm. So you can search by those messages and then go to the company webpage that where a person got recently hired and you will normally see they're actually hiring a lot of positions. So they rarely hire just one candidate. It's most likely they have a department that they're building up or so you'll be able to find on their webpage jobs and apply directly. So that's exactly what happened was the second uh, job that I landed. 